Today on the Berwick Video Tutorials, we're going to show you how to author a basic DVD in DVD Studio Pro. It is a simple process, yet it can be lengthy at times. If you don't know what you're doing, you get lost. So I'm going to start. I'm going to open up DVD Studio Pro, and uh, it will take a moment. And uh, the reason I'm doing it this way is because I want to show you something that will come up the first time you open it. It's Welcome to DVD Studio Pro. There's three layouts. Basic says this layout will be uh, most familiar to users who have used iDVD. That is complete bullshit. Extended as this gives the user more choice, including the addition of a timeline. Advanced, this exposes all the abilities that DVD Studio Pro 4 has to offer. Start with Advanced, because once you want to use more things, the layout's different, you're not going to know how to do it later on. So if you just learn from the get-go how to use the Advanced layout, it's the best idea. Uh, you're going to want to use NTSC if you're in North America, PAL if you're in Europe, and uh, I guess CCAM doesn't really matter. And uh, SD DVD because, uh, well, everyone knows HD DVD failed. It's all Blu-ray now, and Blu-ray has to be burnt through compressor. So you're going to click on OK. And uh, DVD Studio Pro is going to load, and uh, it, it will take a minute or two. And uh, today what I'm going to do is show you how to... Uh, burn a DVD using an Apple menu. Uh, okay, so once your interface comes up, it's going to look like this, and it is extremely overwhelming. Okay, I've never had any professional training, and it took me a good, at least almost an hour to learn how to use this. I mean a solid hour. So uh, let me just show you how to, quick five minutes how to do it. So this is going to be a layout. Down here, you're going to have your assets. You're going to click on import. This is where you're going to take in the video you want. So you're going to go to uh, wherever it is your video is. Mine's my desktop, uh, Sports Talk 101. Uh, the QuickTime movie here, 922 megabytes. Going to import that asset. And then you're going to also import music if you want for your menu. Now we need to edit our menu. So we're going to double click on our menu over here on the graphical display. And going to enable this right here as our menu and over here under the Apple there's a few different types of menus we can use um, there's three different ones for weddings there's tutorials theaters uh, I believe there's one of New York City here yeah New York City they just call it city um, for this I think I'll use city so I'm gonna use there's cover detail and index we're gonna use cover it's gonna apply it to the menu uh, detail is this right here. It's good for um, an infomercial type of DVD, something in a show. We want to give a little bit of information, almost like a PowerPoint, uh, one slide before the video. And then the index, which obviously would be for uh, scene selection. We'll go back to cover. And now you see we're going to have these things here with arrows going down. That means drop, because it is a drop zone, just like an iDVD. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our, uh, our video or any other asset you might want to import, pictures, and we're going to drag it to each one of these, set asset, just like so. And now we're going to click on it, and we're going to go over here to the inspector, and under start frame, you're going to see a little slider. You're just going to drag it over to something different like that. And uh, same thing with the one below, but somewhere different. So it says two different things. And now you got the, those are all set. Now in your menu, it's going to say title information here. If you click on that once, go over here to your inspector, you can edit the text inside of it to say, uh, well, this is Sports Talk 101, just like so. And um, now you're going to see all these buttons over here. They're practically useless because they're not being linked to anything. And we don't want to set the targets to them yet. We want to get rid of all the extra ones. We only want one of them. So we're just going to delete all the buttons except for one. And this last button here, what we're going to do is uh, go over to the inspector and you see target and you're going to set it to track one only problem is we don't have an asset to track one now you see that arrow appeared there if I um, if I get rid of that asset on the button to not set that goes away meaning that the menu is not linked to anything that arrow which we're going to go back and reset that target to uh, tracks and stories track one means now it's going to track one the only problem is there's nothing in track one. So now we need to take our video and audio that we imported as an asset before, which is our movie, and we're going to drag it over on top of track one and release. Now it's going to show up in the timeline down here. 
as track one, just like so. And it's uh, very extended right now. If we compress it a little bit, it'd be easier to skim through, just like so. So now we double click back to our menu and click on button one again. We're going to change the name of it. Uh, unfortunately here, this changes the name just of what the actual button is to, uh, you can say play, but it's not going to do anything up here. We have to double click on the text and then we have to change it to say, um, play show and press enter. Oh, sorry. Don't press enter. Click outside of it. Now you're going to drag that around to, uh, some way that looks good and, uh, like that. Then you're going to click on that big black bar that was behind it, and we're going to resize it to make it look a little less obnoxious. Okay. Now, if you click back on where it says Play Show, you see that little white square right there? Well, that's just a shape, uh, the button, basically. You can make whatever you want. There's some apple shapes. Um, there's not too many things that look decent. Usually, I just like to uh, change it to Not Set, so there's nothing there, so it just says Play Show. Nice and simple. Gets the point across. Okay, now, uh, if we hit this little motion button right here, just like an iDVD, it's going to play the menu. And, uh, it's got some, some ambient noise. What we want to do, though, is take that song we had and drag it in there. And just click, uh, this is another thing. When you drag something over the uh, menu, leave it there for a second, uh, an overlay is going to come up. There's add to existing audio, which would be to composite it, or just set audio. We just want to set audio. Now if we click the motion again, we have new menu music. Just like that. Okay, now uh, there's one last thing to do. We're going to click on track one here, and end jump, menu, menu one, Click on Menu. That way, when we're done with that video, instead of just going to black and the DVD doing nothing, it's going to come back to the menu. And there's other options like adding a first play with a copyright information or anything like that, or having the end jump go to a copyright slate, but uh, we're not going to bother with that. Just very simple right now. And uh, basically, we now have a DVD that is set to go. One last thing you want to do is if you work with Anamorphic, you want to click on your track and you want to make sure over the inspector that display mode is set to 16.9. Um, usually pan scan is the best option, but in this case we're sticking with 4.3 because that's what our, our video is, 720x480i, 4.3. And uh, everything else is all set to go. What we're going to do now is go over here and you're going to see simulate. We're just going to click on simulate and what that's going to do is let us see what our disc would look like if we put it in DVD player opened it. So click on that. Here's our menu. I'm going to click on Play Show. Perfect. So, everything works. There's no breaks in it. One last thing to check is to click the Skip to End a Track. And, goes back to the menu. You're all set. Now, there's just one more thing you need to do, and that's Build and Format. Uh, you can build it and format it and burn it separately if you want, or just do the Build Format option. It does all three. So, you got to click on that. Change your name to uh, Sports Talk 101. That's the disk name. That's what it'll say if you put it in a computer. Uh, build location. You're going to change it to almost like a scratch desk in Final Cut. Uh, on my desktop, I'm going to go to my Sports Talk 101 folder and just choose that. It's going to make your video TS and audio TS folders there. It's going to write them. And uh, basically, that's all you have to do. There's nothing you have to change in disk volume. Region copyright, you might want to change if you want to restrict it to certain areas of the world only. Um, everything else should be set up for your single-sided, uh, large 12-centimeter disk. Red laser, single layer, all set. And uh, what you're going to do now is you're just going to click on Build and Burn. And it's going to ask you to insert a DVD. Insert your blank DVD negative R, because remember, negative R is best for video. Positive R is best for data. But if all you have is positive R, there is a DVD negative R simulation mode here. That works very well. It says disk insertion, waiting for the device to become ready because I put the DVD in. And uh, it's just going to verify that it's a blank DVD, that it's burnable, and that the drive likes it. And in just a few moments, probably about five seconds. Or a little longer. It's going to encode it, which is obviously faster on a machine like a Mac Pro, but it's still going to fly. Um, I find, personally, 
that DVD Studio Pro encodes and burns almost twice as fast as iDVD, even on the same computer. And I think it has to do with iDVD, has an old architecture, and I think it, it doesn't utilize the processors properly. DVD Studio Pro does because it's built for multi-processor, multi-unit uh, setups. And it's just going to encode it, and it's processing everything, converting it to MPEG-2, writing it into the Video TS and Audio TS folders on your scratch disk. And then when it is done with this, it will burn it to DVD. You can see down in the log that it has written the ISO 9660 and the UDF 1.02 structures. ISO 9660 is for computers and the UDF universal disk format is mainly for video. Now it's just copying those video TS and audio TS folders over onto the DVD. And that's how easy it is to author a simple DVD in DVD Studio Pro.